Hello and welcome to my fourth Touch Designer tutorial. Um, today we're going to be making this pixel sorting effect that you can see in the background. Um, apologies regarding how long it's taken to upload, but it's uh, finally here. Um, also, apologies if you can hear my fan in the background. It's very hot in my apartment at the moment. Uh, <laughs> So I try and keep it down as much as possible. Um, just to start off explaining, what we're going to do is start down here and make a simple, a very simple beat detector. And then we will be making this setup here, which creates the pixel sorting effect that you can see in the background. So as usual, we're going to just delete all of it and start again from scratch. Just to zoom out and show you that I always work with a 1280 by 1280 width and height and the background top is forward slash BG. So we just start off with a audio file in chop like so and then connect, connect an audio device out. Uh, where is it? Yep, there. Place it there. Just so you can hear the track in the background. Next, we're going to add a math and change the combine chops to add. From that, we're going to add an audio filter, like so, and change the cutoff units to frequency and the filter cut off to around about 300 hertz okay mm -mm -mm. Right. Uh, combine no it says combine channels instead of combine shops so that one there okay now that looks fine uh, from there we're going to add a filter and change the filter width to uh, 0 0.16. Oh, we forgot to add an analyzer there as well. And with the analyze, I'm just going to change the function here to RMS power. Okay. So off of the filter, we're going to add another map, like so, and leave that as is. Then add a rename and change it to the letter A. And then a speed chop, and finally a null. Like so. so that's now a very basic beat detector that we've set up. If you wanted to get more in depth, you can always look on YouTube for a different tutorial. Um, this is just a very simple beat detector. Uh, so now that's all sorted out, we're going to be starting to work with the tops. Uh, I'm just going to add a movie file in and then copy paste that so we have two of them move that down a bit and then add a switch and if you highlight these and paste that into the switch uh, what the switch does is if you if it swaps between each movie, movie file and if you check the blend between inputs, it will blend uh, both of the movie files together, which we'll be using later. So from the switch, we're going to add a fit. And under fit, we're going to change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. Or 1280 by 1280 as I have a non-commercial key. Right, so from that 
we are gonna we are gonna we are gonna check uh, one of these fit outside so yeah it just seems a little bit there okay so from there if we scroll up we're gonna add a noise and place that run about there actually we'll move it over a bit and change the resolution to 1280 by 720 or whatever you want and add a Cross here. Place that one into channel one. Place that one into channel two, like so. And bump that all the way up at the moment to number one. Okay, from the cross, I'm going to add a null. Place that right about there. And that's it for now. Next, we're going to add a GLSL and place that as far over there as possible. So when you add in a GL, GLSL, you get a little info box. Right, let's just put it up there and a chop execute like so. Uh, just to save a little bit of time, I've got the copy. I've got the code here. We're really just going to copy and paste into this box. So let's copy that, delete all that, and paste it in. And there we go. Um, so there will be a couple of things that we'll be changing on that later. Um, so next. We are going to add a feedback loop. So uh, up here, just type in the feedback, place that line about here. Oh, uh, and on this one, add a note at the end, which we're going to name BG, which would be our background. If you click on the feedback here, and underneath the target top, Drag and drop that one, excuse me, into there, like so. And then, and then, and then, we're going to add a mat. So, add that down here. Mat, place that down there and drag this one into source 2 like so on the map we're going to turn on the switch inputs all the way up for one and that channel we're going to have as luminance okay and then drag actually leave that for now so that's that now we're going to add a noise top down here. Place that right about there. And to change a couple of things into the noise. Uh, you can add any seed or change any seed that you want. And as you can tell in this book, in the viewer here, it changes to whatever seed that you put in. And um, we'll just leave it like that for now. Um, I'm going to make the period 4, turn down the harmonics, turn down the spread, um, make the gain 0 0.248, uh, turn down the exponent all the way, like so, um, turn all the way, the amplitude all the way up, amplitude all the way up to 2, and Turn the offset down to 0 0.043. 
Okay. Underneath the resolution, we're going to make that 1280 by 720, like so. Uh, actually, 1280 by 1280, and make that one 1280 by 1282. Just keep everything in a square format. Okay. Um, underneath, maybe uh, we'll be changing some things in the translate uh, TZ box later. So here we're going to add a threshold like so and turn the threshold up to one and then add a level like so and place the level into the input to. Uh, up here, I'm going to add a constant chop, place that there, and we're going to name the, re const the constant recovery. Like so. And then attach a null to that, and place that just above the level. If we make that one Oh, and underneath the constant here, if you just bump that all the way up to one, like so. Underneath level here, we're going to make this one viewer active and drag and chop reference underneath the brightness. Okay. And then we will just leave that for now. Okay. All's looking good at the moment. Um, down here, we're going to add another constant, like so, and we're going to name this one num passes and change that to three. Uh, from that, we're just going to add another null, place that around about there, and Let's, 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 let's place that one into that and then yeah leave it like so underneath the GLSL we're gonna change the uniform name to I frame and underneath this box we just click here just so you can see that I'm typing it. So it's me dot time dot frame like so. And under input extend mode, we're going to leave that as hold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that seems to be all working at the moment. Uh, underneath common on the GLSL, if we make this on viewer active, and we're just going to drag that and chop reference under passes, like so. Okay, it seems that we have this set up now, um, and we down here we have our audio file, uh, our B detector, sorry. So, what I'm going to do is just quickly uh, get a couple examples and put them into the movie files, and uh, I will be back. All right, hello, I'm back. So, the next part of the tutorial is with any of your audio file in. We're just going to be using the default uh, beat that comes with Touch Designer here. Um, insert your song, if you just find your song, place it in, 
and then underneath the null here if you make that deal active like so and then go up into noise 2 and in this box here just drag and drop and chop reference okay um also noted that these two wires here need to be changed around so if you disconnect this one drag up into this one which makes the wire go yellow and just release and drag this one from the null two into the input two like source two sorry um, and yeah that basically um, makes the effect visible so if I, I what I will do is turn the music off as my OBS is not recording sound currently um, but what I will do is go up into ah okay <laughs> we might have a problem so turn that one off there and if we go up to the noise you can see um, that it is reacting to the beat and is now causing a pixel sorting effect on the banana behind it. Um, just to show you what else you can do with this, if we move over and I find an example, like so. Um, put another example into this one. I can show you what cool effects you can achieve. Uh, okay, with the uh, with this the switch here, um, as you may see, it is very laggy on my screen. Uh, that's because my laptop is rather rubbish. But we can change this one here slightly so that the movie file 2 is at the back of movie file 1 which is getting distorted there. You can move it up so that you have the other way around like so. And yeah you can just get some really cool glitchy effects as you can see like the trains going over lots of people walking under, under below it's quite cool um just another thing if we change that there um underneath the noise here you can change the period down all the way to i don't know like that and you would get different effects of the noise it's a lot, a lot more smaller as you can see here um, yeah so yeah you get that, that type of effect 